I have a very disturbing story that I'm going to share with you all. And I want to be very clear as to why exactly I'm sharing it before I even go kind of dive into it. Uh, to see that this was buried for the most part, um, even in Google sense, it seems like it was like deboosting the story. Um, and I, I wanted to highlight it for that reason. And as I go through the actual story, you'll understand why. And it's sad that it has to be the case. You know, it shouldn't be like this, especially when there's act of uh, acts of aggression on children of all people. Right. Innocence. It should not be a case that because it may confirm something that is uncomfortable for you in terms of a narrative that, well, you want to act like it just don't don't exist. OK, but there is this story and I'm going to read it. Uh, uh, it was first covered by a lady from a town hall, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to cover what what exactly happened. OK, again, bear with me. These are some it's screwed up. It's a screwed up story. According to 17 count indictment, a 17 count indictment obtained by town hall, the LGBT activist allegedly performed oral sex on boys and they forced children to perform it on them. And they did something to their uh, sons. Now the background is as it documents Right here, William Dale Zulick, who was a uh, who worked as a supervisor at the county's uh, Georgia Department of Driver Services, so in some way worked uh, with the government, and Zachary Jacoby Zulick, who had been booked at the uh, Walton County Jail and uh, was charged with aggravated child molestation sexual exploitation of children and enticing the children for indecent purposes. The Walton County school district helped the Walton County Sheriff's office identify the victims who had been enrolled in third and fourth grade in July. Okay. And as it documents here, at the beginning of the article, horrific new details Emerged in the case of these LGBT activist couple um, who um, were arrested in Georgia this past summer on suspicion of their two adopted. They adopted these children and they abused them. So the new revelations here, um, Mia, Kathea, that's a that's a name. According to the 17 count indictment, the adoptive dads who are LGBTQ activists allegedly perform oral sex on both boys. And force the children to perform more sex on them and blah, 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 blah as I just said. Uh, one child who just turned 11 suffered in injuries from being messed up. Additionally, the older of two victims who just turned 11, like I just mentioned, was severely hurt. The court documents reported suggested the child sexual abuse had been going on for years, dating back at least to 2019. Zachary Zulick filmed and his so-called husband, William, sexually abusing at least one of them. And that's what says it says in the criminal affidavit. Taha also reported that Zachary admitted to being the cameraman. In a recorded police interview, he said that he sent uh, video evidence in these routine tapes. So these guys were filming themselves as well as they abused these people. Here you got right here that there was a 27-year-old uh, Hunter Clay Lawless and 25-year-old Luis Armando Vizarro Sanchez were two men in question that were a part of this pedophile ring as well. Like I said, this is is jacked up. The LGBT activists on whose doorstep on whose doorstep the welcome Matt Red gayest place in town. And 
it, it says Georgia is a death penalty state. I don't know what they're going to get, and I don't want to start a debate on like the the ethics and the morality of a of the death penalty. But I will say, if there are people that deserve it, it's folks that are innocently doing things to young boys like that. Now, this is the part where we have to talk about what is uncomfortable. If you guys go want to go read it, these details again, you can go to Mia's uh, post. Here, matter of fact, and she kind of breaks a lot of stuff down. Um, You know, there's those two guys there. She breaks a lot of stuff down uh, as well. This dude straight up says it. They they were on like a little weird, they were on Snapchat. They were on other weird, weird sites and just basically admitting to what it is they're doing. And what it seems to be is that they are kind of hiding behind. uh, Let me say this. I'm not going to say that they're hiding behind the, the LGBT stuff. I'm I'm not going to do that. Let's not do that. I will say this though. Y'all got to do something. Now when folks talk about grooming and they talk about all these other sorts of ideas, I think this is the more extreme case of what they actually are afraid of. I think people just don't seem to understand how impressionable kids are in, for, in terms of they're like sponges. Let's just say that. Right. And they're an easy target for people that want to do bad. And when you make certain parts of the population basic, I don't want to say invulnerable. That's not the case. But you make it seem like just because someone says that those groups of people are doing some weird things that involve children sexually. Right. There's a problem there. You call it out and then they try to, of course, reverse card you're homophobic you're this you're that and it has people shying away from addressing the issues or not even calling it for what it is and this is what i was talking about like with the deranking of sort of this story we know why they did it right now if this was like some bunch of guys with maga hats that were running a pedophile ring you think you'd hear the end of it no this might be and probably is the first time in it. This is one of the more egregious examples of this. And this is probably one of the first first times you heard the story. And there's a reason for that, because they have deemed this certain pop part of the popu- population is basically un- untouchable. And this would have to at least have people pay attention to something in this relationship that is uh, between this community or members of that, not the community itself, but members of it. And as it pertains to young kids, it would force you to have to actually look at that and say, well, there's a problem there. And people would rather not do that. Instead, just pretend that it never happened. Like I said, these guys deserve to burn in hell multiple times. Wherever you're viewing the content, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, you may be interested in my comic book company, Ripperverse Comics. Our first book and campaign, I Sum Number One, brought in $3.7 million with tens of thousands of satisfied customers. Visit Ripperverse.com to check out our store and stay up to date with the latest campaigns from one of the hottest new comic book companies. Also, my first big step towards a parallel economy was the development of my personal website, EricDJuly.com. This entirely replaced my Patreon. Now, if you enjoy this content, please consider becoming a member over at the website. We have an ever-expanding list of perks for various membership tiers, a forum, and a phone app. Some of these perks will even benefit you if you're fans of the Ripperverse. Anyway, I appreciate you so much for being a supporter and or customer. I even got a little love for my haters.